So why is MLP so important? Why should we be concerned about it? Why don't we just do an MVP? Basically do the bare minimum of uh, a minimum viable product, basically what somebody will pay us for. And the reason why is because MVP is perfectly fine if you're just trying to release a product. But will your product last? And the problem is, is we get bored with our products. We also get false positives. You can go out and take all these interviews and reviews and you can build what people ask for. And then when they actually get it in their hands and try it, they could say, you know something, I don't really like this that much. And so uh, that's what Steve Jobs used to say. You don't know if a customer is going to like a product until you get into their hands. The thing about products is features can obsolesce quickly. You might like something for a while and then you just get bored with it. Also, we know that perception is something that we can charge for. So we need to understand how they perceive it. So what I need to do is first figure out my MLP and then I can go after my MVP. And here's the best example of making an MVP versus making an MLP. Does anybody remember the Zune music player that Microsoft came out with? What did Microsoft talk about? They talked about, you know, how many gigs it had and everything else. And guess what? Compare that to the iPod. Did the iPod ever talk about gigs? No. And this is the difference. Apple advertised an MLP, a product that you'll love, the experience. The Zune was a technical product, therefore it's about features. And the thing is we know what the value of features are. That's the way you can think of MLP and MVP. Why do we fall in love? Well, we could look at Maslow. And what it comes down to is that uh, below the line of safety and physiological needs, is these are necessities. And we have a tendency to take these for granted, but those are the pain. And so the reason why we fall in love is about belonging. We get excitement. We feel attraction to it. It uh, affects our esteem. We want something personal and special for us, something that speaks to us. And in terms of self-actualization, does the product have in, the product can have intelligence? I know it and I understand it. And so what all these factors put together is this is what about branding and positioning is about. But this is why we fall in love with products. You need to touch on one of those need values in order to get an MLP. Here's an example of the M33 Labs Smart Desk. Now, what the Smart Desk is is a very high-end computer. These are the kind of computers people pay $3,000 for. What they did is they integrated it into a desk, so all those wires and everything you have associated with it are gone because it's all integrated to a desk. If they used an MVP focus, they're never going to be able to sell for the simple reason that people are going to focus on features and say $3,500 for a computer. And that's the problem that you have when you get into a conversation about price. <coughs> excuse me, your product can get trivialized pretty quickly. When M33 realized what they needed to do is they need to think about analogy. They're not selling Toyotas, they're selling Land Rovers. So they needed to use that kind of approach. We're saying a high-end, classy product. And so uh, what it comes down to, though, is you can target your audience. Uh, but you need to figure out, is your market going to be long enough? I mean, large enough to make money. Now, in terms of MVP, there is still legitimacy to a minimally viable product. Uh, and the reason why MVP came about is because technologists are too goo geeky. They keep over-engineering things. You waste a lot of time and money. Um, the thing is, there's so many potential customers for your product, you never pin it down. And so by focusing on getting something out there, getting into people's hands, you can get to revenue faster. But the limits to the MVP approach are addressed by MLP. Uh, this is actually out of your textbook, and this explains what the MVP process is. 
that you figure out what the value proposition is. Now, uh, who are the co who? Uh, what is your market size? Who is uh, your what is your market, and how does it pertain to the customer? Uh, your value proposition in terms of your customer relationships, your resources, your partners, and everything else. Uh, the biggest thing in trying to figure out who is it I'm going to talk to. The more structured it is, then you're interested in the decision processes. If you're talking of, and these are corporations. And so how do corporations make decisions? On the other end of the spectrum is individuals. And now you're interested more in psychographics. And if it's somewhere in the middle, not quite an organization, not quite individuals, then you're interested in how do I contacts, basically, influencers. Uh, in terms of sales, there's inbound marketing and outbound marketing. Outbound marketing is I go out and talk to you. I start knocking on doors or whatever. Inbound marketing is you come to me. And this is, again, why search engine is so powerful, because you're coming to me. You're showing intent, and intent is a very large part of it. Personalization is also a big part, especially today in digital marketing, that they get to know you. And so what it comes down to, though, is once I get to know you and talk to you, then there's a leap of faith here. How do I get you to pull out that credit card or whatever? And so today in marketing, it's not about heavy-handed uh, sales tactics. Since you already show me that you have intent, when you do inbound marketing. Now it's about doing the right things to make you feel comfortable with the product, to fall in love with it. And so that's what doing the right things is about. And so I have a probability of sell at that point. And so marketing tactics is about motivating you to buy my product. Sales tactics are about coercion. And so uh, why are they less effective? on digital channels and again it's because we live in this different age right now we have so many choices and everything else we want to feel comfortable before we buy something uh, an example of uh, the mvp was actually the flow sensor originally that sensor had all these other features with it with bubble sensors and occlusion sensors and valves and everything else but what people really valued were the pressure sensors and the flow sensors and so uh, they want to know the pressure in the line, and they also want to know how much flows out. And so the value proposition initially was about safety. Uh, but all those extra features, people really didn't want. And so in terms of MLP and MVP, um, it's the key thing is to understand how does my customer engage the product? And by understanding how they engage my product, I can figure out what is it that I can ditch. Or there's a bunch of obscure stuff, like if I hit Alt-Shift-F6, I can streamline it. And so the way I can validate it is use market research techniques. We'll talk about in Electric 2.4. In terms of how I'm working with large organizations, decision-making units, I'm interested in influencers, recommenders, who are the end users? Who are the ones who actually touch the product? The thing is, they may not be the decision makers. And naturally, those are who I'm interested in. And who's the economic buyer? Within an organization, it's normally some kind of materials manager or the purchasing department or something like that that ultimately can sign checks. So I want to know how purchasing decisions are made. And what are the factors? What are the attributes that make up purchasing decisions? Well, who are the number of people who make decisions? Is there a timing to it? Uh, do they have to qualify my product? Meaning, do they have to make sure that it works? Which means we want sample and testing. And so when you look at MVP, Blankendorf talks about it. You segment, you pick a beachhead, you build an end user profile, you figure out what my TAM is, and then I can do my profile and persona. This is how I, I can use minimally viable product, how to get sales. In terms of picking a beachhead market, 
these are the factors that I'm interested in. What a one-sided and two-sided market is, this two-sided market is like eBay. I need a seller and I need a buyer. So that's what we mean by uh, two-sided. But these are the factors that go into picking out what beachhead you actually want to go after. My end user profile looks like this. These are the variables I'm interested in. Here's an example of what a persona looks like. Uh, we talked about it in the last lecture. And so uh, the crux of all this in B2B is if I'm going after a business, I need to understand how they work. B2C is going after individual customers, and therefore I need a lot of reach. And so that's why all these network effects and everything else is so important. Uh, in the next lecture, well, I shouldn't say lecture, in the next video, we'll talk more about the MVP process.